but you can't just give it to power. Think about Dario Franchitti. Yes, he didn't make the Firestone Fast 6, but their best on race day. And when you look at strategy, Chip Ganassi is the one who makes the call for Dario, so don't count them out. Then let's go back to 24 spot. Tony Kanaan, who gave you the ride in Wally's world. He's decided, <laughs> it was a great ride, too. <laughs> and he decided, hey, obviously, the setup is not working for me. I'm going to take my teammate's setup. He now has Takuma Sato's setup. So 24th, Tony Kanaan, not in for the win, but I think we'll have some excitement. And a very challenging racetrack, too. 17 turns, a little over two miles in length, but just a couple of passing opportunities, so you know that we're going to see a lot of action out there. Yeah, today. you really are. You're going to almost have to force the issue on some of these corners, and I think guys will take it uh, you know, take it easy. But once we start getting into these pit stops, you're going to have to start taking some chances to make the passes because it is tight. It's a very busy racetrack. One of the most picturesque, however, racetracks that we will visit during the 2011 series were located in Leeds, Alabama, which is just outside of Birmingham. A very well-cultured track, if you will. A lot of beautiful places to visit around the course itself. All right, well, let's go down for the opening ceremonies and get the start of today's race underway. Fans, please remain standing and welcome Birmingham's own American Idol winner Ruben Stutter as he sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last glimmer, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Nothing that makes the chills go up your spine any more than hearing the national anthem just before a big event and a flyover. And that is the situation that we have just experienced as the crowd on hand here is anticipating the start of today's event. Thank you for joining us for IndyCar Central on Versus, presented by Verizon. The command to start engines just moments away now. Stay with us on Versus. Road to Glory started in St. Petersburg, Florida for the drivers of the Eyes on IndyCar Series. 
Like so many previous journeys before, soon after the green flag fell, rivalries became renewed. With drivers fighting side by side, a hero emerged by finding the shortest path to victory. 27th win of his career. Dario back in victory lane. Last year, it was Will Power who dominated early. But Dario Franchitti won the championship and is picking up where he left off. The rivalry continues, but Will Power must match him today to stay even. For this to happen, he cannot do it alone. It's a team effort in a battle of Penske versus Ganassi. With decades of history, generations of heroes, and a season in which the greatest spectacle in sports celebrates its centennial, every event is not just a race, but a turn in the road to glory. Number two of the 2011 IZOD IndyCar Series is about to unfold in the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama from Barber Motorsports Park in Leeds, Alabama, outside of Birmingham. A great aerial shot as we tell you that the weather here could not be better. They were predicting possible record highs in the upper 80s this afternoon, but right now it's a relatively comfortable 82 degrees with 51% humidity and a slight breeze from the south. Nothing but sunny skies, just slight clouds dotting the blue skies. Great crowd on hand and they are ready to go. Seated on the hillsides and in the grandstand beyond where we are here on the main straightaway. 26 cars and drivers, one more than two weeks ago at the season opener in St. Petersburg, Florida. The drivers will go 90 laps, 214 miles on this 2.3 mile road course, which includes 17 turns. It is a very challenging racetrack for these drivers. It's the second time that this series has been here. We were here last year in a race that was won by Elio Castroneves. The spectator areas that you saw there, Bob, are just awesome. They get such a great view. To look across the track, they're angled. The whole thing has been done just in a fantastic, and it's fully landscaped. I don't think there's a spot around the track that hasn't been attended to. And, and also a great thing about it, they added a bunch of those uh, jumbotrons around for the fans, so they get to see a lot more action. When you're seated there on the hillside, you can actually have a, a good visibility of a great portion of the racetrack. It kind of weaves back and forth. But let's talk more about this racetrack, Jan. First of all, it's in this beautiful 240-acre facility. You end up with a 2.3-mile road course, obviously, but you have 80 feet of elevation. There in turn five, highlighted in red, definitely is the best place to pass. And when you're seeing things like 5A, B, and C, you're seeing letter designations. IndyCar this year has decided to drop the letters and go with the full 17-turn format. So the final two turns, you'll hear us say, turn 16 and 17, and definitely a busy racetrack for these drivers. It's a top five comparison. 2010 to St. Pete, Branchiti holds first and power second. Scott Dixon was one of those involved in the first lap mayhem and finished 16th at St. Petersburg. Elio Castroneves finished fourth in the points last year and finished 20th two weeks ago. And Ryan Briscoe, fifth in the points, 18th in the final rundown at St. Petersburg. There is Will Power winning his second consecutive pole position for this season and the second consecutive at uh, Barber Motorsports Park. Will Power with now alone in the cockpit with his thoughts. Yeah, I have to check with Marty on this, but I believe they had to, a slight gearbox issue this morning. And, and I know that they were in the gearbox. I don't know if they changed the whole gearbox or not. But uh, Marty, they, they, they did have some problems with that. Did they wind up changing the whole gearbox? I think it was a second to third shift that they were having a problem with, Marty. 
Yeah, Wally, what happened is when Will went from second to third in warm-up this morning, it went from second to fourth, so they were a little concerned about that, so they didn't change, did indeed change the gearbox before they went through tech just to make sure that everything was good, just to be safe and make sure everything went well in the race today. That so. still weighs on a driver's mind. <laughs> I mean, still, yeah, I, I don't care so. if you change anything. You change the mirror on your car, you're worried about it. <laughs> Especially when you're as fast as he's been this weekend.